I can tell from your face that you're already sick of me and we haven't even started yet. Uh, well, that's true every episode, so. Oh, great. I haven't even got my notes open. This is a shit show. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. You're listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Hi, guys. I, I, Welcome to episode 52 of the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Uh, Sophie, what were you going to say? I was just going to say how batteries and light bulbs are kind of the same, where I don't think I've ever bought the right size or fit in any time the first time I've gone out to buy it. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And there's no context to that conversation at, at all. No, I know, but I just wanted to say it before I forgot. <laughs> Well, hi guys, welcome to episode 52 <laughs> of Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. I'm Daniel, this is Sophie. Say hello, Sophie, and then talk about batteries or something. Hello. <laughs> I only wanted to talk about it to make you look like a fool, because one of the last few episodes you were bragging about how you're always prepared, and you have a stacks of batteries of every size ready at your desk for any eventuality. And uh, right before you hit record, you revealed to me that your mouse had died and you didn't have the right batteries for it. Thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. The batteries I had on my desk were a different size. They were for my board, not my mouse. So fuck you. Um, how's your week been? Uh, it's been fine. Um, All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> How about yours? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's just, no, it's been fine. Yeah. Moving um, on. I'm sure things have happened this week, actually, but I just can't remember any of them. Right. All right. Well, I'll take over. Then. Um, I had the week off work, so my week's been completely different than usual for the first time in a while. She's already rolling her eyes. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. No, no, that. Sorry, this isn't because of you. I'm just really, really uncomfortable physically right now because of. Uh, yeah, I know. Can you explain that so that other people understand? I. <laughs> I've got in the habit of having a roast dinner every Sunday recently because I'm just fucking old English bitch now, I guess. And um, for some reason, I thought it'd be a great idea. Like, why has no one thought of this before? To have a bit fucking huge steak as the meat part of the roast dinner. And now I realise why it's never been done. Um, because that's two much. different meals on the same plate. Well, yeah, but also... I can't, I can't really move right now. <laughs> it, it was about an hour ago that I ate it. Why has nobody ever tried this before? Oh, I can't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> yeah. So I'm probably going to have a heart attack mm. by the end of tonight. Sorry, yeah, carry I on. Mean, if, if we can, if we can... <laughs> I love that you just said, I'm probably going to have a heart attack, and then you lifted up the biggest can of beer in the world and just started... <laughs> Glugging, like yeah i've got another one of these fax premium quality lager beers that comes in a one liter can that sounds one. like some something that someone who doesn't speak english would say to try and describe <laughs> something premium well, lager beers apparently it's from the denmark brewery so maybe they didn't have a good translator right. so as i was saying i was off this week and uh went to liverpool for the week Wow. So, um, <laughs> I know, wild. So we <laughs> saw each other in person, which is oh God, a, a rarity was... these days. Yeah. Um, and I, you just... I came into your work, but it was just to order f order food, not to actually see you. Um, and then, I don't know if you do this with other customers, but you just came and sat at our table. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was weird. It was awkward. And it was bad service, if I'm honest. That was uncomfortable. <laughs> The whole I was like, why, why is, why is the waitress come and sat with us? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, I brought my own food over with me. Uh, I charged that to your car, by the way. I hope that's okay. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. I was going to ring the bank and um, and get that charge back because I thought it was unusual, but no, I guess that <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. We, we, we the reason we were in town that night is because we actually went out for the first time since all of the lockdown and everything like went out properly out, did out. something out out yeah and it was uh to go to the comedy club which was you know i'd read about all the social distancing stuff they were doing and they were like 
deep fumigate in the room after every act and stuff like like not every act sorry every show and i'm like yeah you know I, <laughs> fumigate in the room between like you, there's there's videos on their facebook of these like machines that are like pumping out disinfectant everywhere oh. um it's not so it's in a it's in a basement right isn't it yeah yeah but it's like a tiny room it's you know yeah regular capacity is probably like 80 people there's probably so, like no ventilation in there usually no um so i was thinking well i'm sure that's going to be fine um there's you know if you social distance in there there's only going to be like 30 people in the room mm -hmm. and when we got in there the they had like left gaps in the seating so that not everyone was sat next to each other um, right. they'd left two seats between each party which is okay. kind of the guidance in in venues however the rows in front weren't empty every row had people on and instead um, of alternating they... the gaps they they did the gaps in the same places so we sat on the end of the row thankfully on the back row so nobody's breathing on us but then directly in front of us is two more people so you're just so, breathing down there now yeah and and in a comedy club where you're laughing the whole time and stuff. So, okay, I mean, if things go well, you're laughing the whole time. <laughs> I'm not going to say we were laughing the whole time. It was a good night, but there were six acts, right? Because everyone's desperate to get back on stage and also earn some money. That's so, already too many because that's too many comedy styles for me to try and get used to in one evening. <laughs> you need a joke to like ease yourself into how their set's going to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, so... So it was, it was like two, then a break, then two, then a break, then two. And then there was also a compare who would get up and do a bit between acts. Yeah, I hated that guy last time. So, uh, yeah, it was a different guy. You just hate compares in general. Get off the stage. <laughs> I didn't want to see you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. You do need an opening act to, to get how the style of comedy is going to be. You know, my, I, Michael McIntyre has a thing, and I'm not a massive fan of him, but he has, he has a thing about how he went on stage once and he just said, hello. And this like old bloke in a flat cap on the front row just went, not for me and left. <laughs> and like, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Is you do need, like, you need something to tell you, this is, this is what you're in for, for, for however long I'm going to be on the stage. Yeah. And, um, there were, so six acts in total plus the compare and every single one of them's opening line was, the lockdown was shit, wasn't it? Oh. And it was like, oh no, <laughs> this is. I've, I'm here to escape this. Yeah, thinking about this stuff, you know. Um, apart from the last guy who came on and went, not even made a fucking effort to social distance after. You're all gonna die, aren't you? You lot are all gonna die after this. There's not even any pretending. And I was like, wow. yeah, but, well, at least this guy's being honest about it. <laughs> so then we, we, the thing about that night that was a big deal for me was I had a beer for the first time in like three months. Cause I've been drinking fucking seltzer and gin. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? You drink <laughs> all the time. You had a beer. I see. No actual beer. Uh, and I said to Aisha, I was like, I'm a bit fucking a bit nervous about this because what if I'm just fucking hammered instantly? <laughs> like this yeah. could definitely happen. And she was like, well, you know, just see how you feel. I'm sure you'll be fine after you have one. And I said, who knows? Maybe I don't even like beer anymore. I've not tasted it in so long. Maybe it'll be like I'm 15 again going, ugh, gross, acquired taste. Oh. Um, and then I literally had one sip and I was like, oh my God, beer is fucking delicious. I'm yeah. home. I'm back, baby. I was just going to say I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me of um, that day at, at, at Download Festival when I said, do you have your first sip of beer of the day and you just feel like coming home? And you told me I needed to calm down and then also agreed with me. Yeah. We both need to calm down. However, I'm, I'm done with the beer. I'm back to drinking gin and diet lemonade. Um, oh, shame. Back on your yeah. diet? Yeah, back on the diet. But the beer was fucking delicious. And so I had three. And then after we like we left the the comedy club and we stood waiting for for an Uber, and we're like, all I want to do is stay out and go and get drunk everywhere mm -hmm. and you know have a great night. But 
having just sat in that place, I've seen that people don't know how to social distance. And also from going to the toilet once, I've seen that people just still don't wash their hands. Yeah. Like even after everything, I, I, there was one guy who just didn't. And then there was another guy who like put his hands under the tap and then left. Like, oh, right, that's helped. Good job, buddy. Thanks for Now that. you've got wet germs. <laughs> yeah, now you're just going to spread it more with you splashing around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, someone, someone got kicked out as well, uh, which is fucking classic for, for a, a local comedy club. Um, yeah, this guy, someone thinks they're funnier than the guys on stage. Yes, that's absolutely what it was. This guy who thought clearly thought that the show was interactive because <laughs> everything the comedian said like like you know you know comedians always make like say rhetorical questions because yeah. it's how they just further the dialogue that they need to do alone on stage and so <laughs> like like even even just them saying oh lockdown was weird wasn't it they're not expecting you all to answer this answer individually but this guy was like yeah like sure mate nobody cares about what your life's <laughs> been like the last six months that's not what we're here for <laughs> <laughs> but um, we knew it was going to be a problem. Like, it was so uncomfortable that I was like gripping Aisha's leg, like, "Oh my god, we have to get out of here!" Because second or third act on, uh, yeah, he, he said he said about clapping for the NHS, and he said, "Did anyone?" Because uh, we all clap, we're all clapping, weren't we? Did did anyone not clap for the NHS? And this guy went, "Me!" Put his hand in the air, like automatically, right? You're volunteering that you you. You know, you know that's going to be an unpopular opinion. I didn't clap yeah. for the NHS either, but that's because there's no houses near me. It's all kebab shops, so I, I know that they, I know none of them work for the NHS because they work in kebab shops because they're in the <laughs> kebab shop right now. So, so it'd be stupid for me to stand there and 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 clap to nobody. Also, mm. it was it just doesn't achieve anything, really, does it? Let's be honest. No. Um, so I didn't. Well, I also didn't raise my hand and say, yeah, me, I didn't talk to me about how I didn't clap for, for carers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, automatically, you know, this guy's going to be a dick. And the guy says, right, so why didn't you clap? And he said, well, stand up for it, didn't he? So, you know, that's your job. Just get your job done. Um, and the thing about someone like that in a comedy club is they, they always, and it's, it's, they're all the same. They want to shout, they want to be involved, but they absolutely point blank do not want anyone taking the piss out of them or they will fucking fume about it. Yes, and it's like, they're, they're just not very self-aware, are they? Like, no. what did they think was going to happen? Everyone was going to be like, hey, you should be on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want to hear more from this guy. <laughs> um, and then I think like after the second break, I because they have this whole one-way system and everything, and it was actually managed very well. The, you had to enter through a bar two doors down, which somehow underground connects to the comedy club. And then if you want to go to the toilet or go back to the bar or whatever, you had to go outside, back in through the bar. It was They'd actually made so much effort other than <laughs> in the seating. Um, <clears throat> but the, the guy after the second break was being spoken to by security and the show manager or the club manager, whatever his job title is, um, and I could hear, I could hear that what he was saying was, "I'll leave if," and then he's saying the compare's name, who is like the household name there. He's like, "If you go and get him in, he asks me to leave. I'll leave." Why? Like, as if he was one of the acts on stage. As if he is like, "Well, no, unless the big dog tells me to go, I'm staying right here." Oh my God. Fucking nutcases, man. So yeah, I mean, I you get what you deserve when you go to a comedy club, really. I I I know when I go there that there's going to be someone like that, and someone's going to make fun of me for something, you know. And my biggest fear in going to this socially distanced one is if the room is almost empty. Firstly, everyone stands out more, and secondly, it's going to be more awkward if they open up a dialogue with you. But mm -hmm. thankfully, we were on the back row, and and there was none of that this time. Oh, that's so lucky because you're just a target for that kind of thing, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, I have fucking dyed hair and I dress like I haven't listened to any new music since 2001. So, mm. you know, people people want to pick on me when they see me there because I don't look like everyone else in the audience. Yeah. So me and Aisha were talking on the way there about when, when we all went uh, yeah. to the comedy club and... Uh, the guy was the guy was fucking with me because City had just won the league that day and I was in a City shirt. Fair enough. What can you do? 
But then one of the questions he asked, and I can't remember why or how this was related. He asked me what my first word was when I was a baby. <laughs> and my first word was city. And I was like, <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't want to tell him this because I'm going to look like a fucking idiot. I'm going to look like I'm making it up to be cocky because we just won the league. Yeah. But it genuinely was. So I don't know. Like, so I just said it. And he was like, bollocks, mate, bollocks. <laughs> What can you do? But then it's the same guy. You were wearing a Cox Barra shirt, and he yeah. just he just looked them up on Spotify and played them down the microphone, and then didn't make any jokes. He just went, "Yeah, it was all right." <laughs> yeah. That was that was a solid ninety seconds of his set, and he only had five minutes. Yeah. Whatever he got, like maybe that was the joke that he. I don't. I know. I don't know. That was weird. I remember that happening. I think he just had no material. Like he wanted to do the back and forth, but he wasn't very good at it. That's what seemed yeah. like happened. I asked my mum what my first word was before, and she was just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I always think if I have a kid, I'm not going to like, like, how do you, at, at what point do you consider it a word? Like, if they're yeah. saying like, dada, like, are you like, wow, their first word was dada? Cause no, it was like making sense. sounds, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I always really struggle after I've got out of the fucking place to remember anyone's jokes or anything and like we'll me and I shall talk about who we preferred and stuff and, and what we did and didn't like and I can never remember anything at all immediately it goes out of my head but mm. one guy made some he was talking about buying sex toys to spice up his relationship in the bedroom and uh was talking about this sexual bop it and he was like yes we bought this like sexual bop it and you 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 turn it on and it tells you what to do and it's like push it pull it flick it and i was like oh no i'm never gonna i'm never gonna be able to think about that fucking bop it ever again in the same way that's horrible yeah um why is there so much bop it content recently right because there, <laughs> there, there was some advert what was that like a, a bus stop ad thing that i sent you a picture of because it was just for something totally weird like medicine and the way they marketed it was just like shamelessly kind of piggybacking on the success of Bop It. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, the, it's actually, there's one on my street, the same um, billboard, and it's, yeah, it's something like Bash It, Swipe It, or something like that. Yeah, what was it for, though? Yeah, oh, fucking no idea. Um, I'm just trying to find the picture so I can remember. So another thing that I did during my week off. <laughs> it is uh, on the, it was, so it was bank holiday on Monday, and I went to a Chinese restaurant with Aisha and my mum and my sister because it's my sister's favourite restaurant, and they just started delivery. So me and Aisha ordered from there a couple of weeks ago, and it was amazing. Right, it was so good. And my mum told told me it's my sister's favourite, so I was like, right, well we'll go there for the bank holiday before she starts school again this week. And I'm not going to say the name of it because. Maybe this was just they were having a bad day and everything will go back to normal. But holy shit. We got there <laughs> and on the way there, I'm saying to Aisha, like, this place is so ornate for where it is. It seems so fancy. Like, the just the entryway is, like, this fucking <laughs> masterpiece with all this, like, golden tiling and, and, like, a water feature with fish in <laughs> it and all of this stuff. Like, it's crazy. I feel like I haven't seen a restaurant with a fish tank since the 90s. This place looks like it was a Chinese temple that was then, like, copied into this <laughs> restaurant in the 90s. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> and then we pull up, and the, the building is, like, in disarray. And she goes, <laughs> this place? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, ignore the exterior. Wait till we get inside. Honestly, trust me, this fucking entryway. And it's just, just so fancy. <laughs> and we walk in, right? And in the entryway, there's two people eating chips, sat at a table. And the, the woman who greets you said, oh, you can just sit here for now. And it was just this table that was in the entryway. There were never tables there before. We sit down. It's dark. And all the lights upstairs where the restaurant is are off. The f water fountain is not on. There's no fish. <laughs> what? Oh, that's so sad. There's, <laughs> there's damp everywhere. Oh, no. And then we, we're, we're sat there and she brings some prawn crackers over. 
and we're like, oh right, okay. Um, so that's where you're sitting. So okay, yeah, well, like, well, it's, it's like, oh, they must, they must be like social distancing, so they've got to keep you down here before they can take you up or whatever. I, you know, fair's fair, I understand. And then she brought the menus over. <laughs> so for now, she meant for the yes. duration. Yes, you can sit here for now, meant. And when you leave, that's when you will not be sat there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, you know, like when you've bigged something up and then yeah. someone, someone doesn't enjoy it and you can tell they're not enjoying it. Disappointing. Well, I'd big this up and immediately I was like, no, listen, I show you have to understand. <laughs> this <laughs> is not what I was envisaging. Oh my God. It was the most fucking insane experience of my life. Went to the toilet and the, the way they'd handled the social distancing, toilet cleaning situation is you go in through the main door and then there's the men's, the women's, and there's a disabled toilet. And they'd put a chair in the way of the men's toilets, but like inside the door. So I went in because I, I just wanted to wash my hands. I went in and the door just hit a chair. And I was like, that's a weird place to put that chair. And it was facing one of the cubicles. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck has been going on? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> and so, so I thought, right, maybe the setup is that you have to use the disabled toilet. Then they only have to clean one toilet. And that, I guess, kind of makes sense. Does um, it? If they have to, like, deep clean it every single time or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then my mum went and, and went into the disabled toilet. Because I said, like, oh, use that one. I think that's what you meant to do. And she came back out and she was like, yeah, there's no lock on that. So I went in the women's toilets and the door just didn't close. <laughs> like the cubicle door wouldn't, wouldn't close. Like, man, that's weird. But then the, wait- the waitress came over to take our order. And she said, can I get you started with some drinks? Uh, just so you know, uh, we, don't, we don't do any, uh, we don't have any alcohol. Uh, we only have um, fizzy, we only have soft drinks, fizzy drinks. And I was like, it's weird because there's a huge bar upstairs. So, and like, this is so odd. What's happening? Were they really open? Well, did they, did they expect you? Or? So, well, we'd, we'd made a reservation, right? It's not like we just showed up. And then the two people left who were eating the chips. And then we were the only people there. There was Wait, no so that meat- was their whole order? Like chips? Well, it's an all you can eat buffet place. So they may uh. have. But yeah. it's like made to order all you can eat. So they bring it over. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's how all buffet places have to work now, by the way. Right. This place always has been like that, though. Okay. Like they only make it when you order it. Um, so they give you really you small will... portions, hoping that you won't eat. <laughs> it's uh, genius. Yeah. Um, and so we we're now the only table in there. There's no music playing. So we can't even talk about how awkward this is because they'd be able to hear us because they're stood four feet away. Answering, just like, yeah. <laughs> just answering, no, just answering the phone again and again saying, you haven't received your order yet? <laughs> over and over and over again. Every phone call they took was like, oh, oh it's not arrived yet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I was like, this is, this is getting really, really fucking bizarre. What does Amy think? Amy was horrified. Because it's her favourite place, and she's just like, I'm sure. That, and this, the, the best bit is, and Amy picked up on this, my sister, anyone who's not listening, my, my 13-year-old sister, she leaned over and she went, wasn't the kitchen upstairs? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but isn't there a kitchen there? And I think they must have just built this temporary kitchen downstairs because the kitchen 100% used to be upstairs where the restaurant was. And now it's... The entrance, the like counter where they take phone calls, and the kitchen, and that's it. And then another table comes in, and they get put in this like back room. And I look through, and it just looks like someone's living room. But yeah. my mom said they used to like have like private functions in there, and it wasn't right. big enough for it to be like you know a wedding reception. But you might have had your birthday there with fifteen people or whatever. Right. Yeah. Now we are the only two tables in there. And 100% of the orders were taken to the wrong table. She took our food to them and their food to us every single time. Mm-hmm. It's, the thing I forgot to say is before, we, before any other tables were in there, she just walked over with a plate of chips and went, chips, 
And I was like, no, we haven't ordered anything. And <laughs> he looked around at every other empty table and then just took them back into the kitchen. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I was there. There's no so idea funny. what was going on. It was, it, it was like... Matt, it was like we were living in a TV show. It was like, this has to be a joke of some kind. <laughs> you were being punked. Mm. Yeah, if this was 2003, I would, I would think we were being punked. Um, so I, m- my mum reckons that maybe they've, like, the licensee has left and now they can't serve alcohol. And um. then because the licensee people or whatever have to go there, they've maybe gone, this place is a shithole and alerted the council and they've been shut down but carried on anyway <laughs> like i'm not sure i don't know what the deal is but that's why i'm not going to say their name because maybe they were having a bad day maybe it's fine <laughs> yeah. so yeah that was nice um that was that was my sister's treat before she went back to school well was the food okay at least no no <laughs> um no they they brought it out they didn't bring it all out together which i understand it's an all you can eat buffet but if I order sweet and sour chicken, for example, and I order fried rice with it, I don't just want the rice. <laughs> I don't, don't just bring me a like plate of rice. Like 10 minutes before the chicken. But mm-hmm. even, even on, a, on an even weirder scale than that, we ordered um, crispy duck with pancakes. And, you know, you get like the mm-hmm. cucumber and spring onion and stuff. They brought out the cucumber and spring onion and hoisin sauce a good 10 solid minutes before the duck. It was, <laughs> it was, it, and that was all they brought out. And then we were just staring at it, just like, this is weird, isn't it? That should have been the warning sign. Mm. But then... Oh my um, God, there's more. Well, no, it, this isn't another bad thing. It's just the bill wasn't the amount it was meant to be, but by less. Like, it should have been about £80, and it was yeah. 55 including all the drinks, which were extra. And it should have been 80 without the drinks. And it was 55. Oh. And I was just like, okay, I'll pay that and leave then. Bye. I'm not, I'm not going to fucking correct it because fuck this. And the, <laughs> the people kept coming in and saying, because it was, it was the bank holiday, the 31st of August. It was the last day of that government scheme that eat out to help out thing where you get 50% off 10 pounds or whatever. It, what, what, right. Whatever the deal was. I didn't actually go anywhere during it, but people kept coming in and saying, are you doing eat out to help out? And they'd say no, and then the people would leave. That was it through the whole night. So we were the only two tables there the whole night because everyone else just left. It sounds like maybe they were doing it then. Maybe that's why your bill was so cheap. I think maybe they just, they it just off because they realised how bad it had been and thought, we cannot charge bank holiday prices for this because right. it's been a shocker. We have had a bad night. Maybe there was, the, the, as we were leaving, so the place closed at eleven. We left at like ten thirty. The kitchen had clearly stopped cooking, and someone rang as we were leaving. And the woman went, "You still not had your order? Oh my oh. god, this is ridiculous!" The woman said, that. <laughs> <laughs> you, "It's like yes, you work here. You can't say that to the customer. This is ridiculous. Oh. Why do you keep ringing here? <laughs> can't believe you haven't had your order yet. What are you thinking?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just oh, what a nuts no. experience that's terrible you know once i was in a restaurant years ago and um while i was in there some other customers started kicking off like really loudly about um how i think it was that they they said they'd ordered like a 16 ounce steak or you know probably wasn't that but big and they were like this isn't 16 ounces and the, the waitress was just like, eh, 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 yeah, it is. That's that's how big they are. And he was just like, there's no way. But he'd, he'd eat like half of it anyway. Oh, and he, he was like, it was getting really, really awkward because obviously like, I mean, it, it was, wasn't was a particularly small restaurant either, but like, everyone in there could hear what was going on. And everyone was like, you know, stopping talking and turning around. And it was just... I felt really bad for the employees because this guy was adamant and I'm pretty sure he asked them to weigh it in front of him. And they were just like, no. That guy replies to rhetorical questions at comedy nights. (laughs) Yeah, probably the same guy. Um, Yeah, I think in the end, they left without paying. It was like a group of them. I think there was like five of them. And um, they, uh, they just walked out and it was, I felt really bad for the restaurant. But then 
they came over with the bill for us and was like, oh, we've given you a third off. I'm like, really sorry about all the commotion. For... They just, and I was like, oh, we should just totally like get someone to do this every time we go to <laughs> That's, isn't that crazy though? Like the difference in like service expectations and stuff that he's kicked off and actually clearly they were very good with their service. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we, had that, we, had Ironic. This, we had this awful experience in this, in this Chinese restaurant on Monday and then today we all went for lunch at this cafe and the woman didn't bring my coffee up straight away when she brought the other drinks. So then when she brought the food up, we were sat upstairs, so they weren't around to speak to her or anything. So I just thought, I'll just catch her when she, when she brings the food up. When she brought the food up, I just said, oh, is, is my coffee still on the way, do you know? And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry, what did you order? Brought it up and then said, I've taken that off the bill. And it's like, there's really no need. <laughs> it's been two minutes. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Like, but yeah. Sometimes, um, yeah, things like that happen in my work where something takes a bit longer than expected or whatever. And I mean, by a bit longer, I mean less than ten minutes. But you know, yeah, um, everything you cook can be ready in five. So yeah, and um, sometimes you know if something happens. We're like, oh, would you do you want to pick a a drink? You know, a soft drink for free. Yeah. And one time I forgot to say soft. <laughs> the guy was just like, yeah, I'll have a Peroni. And I was just like, oh, now I can't take it back because I've said it. But like those kinds of people who just be like, it reminds me of that thing I said about my brother's ex who, when she was working in a bar and someone said, take your own, she'd be like, oh yeah, I'll have a champagne. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Just Psycho. take the most expensive thing on the menu. Insane. Well, I found that advert that I was talking about that was ripping off, off it. Oh, yeah, go on. Okay, it was <laughs> something called Life Boy. Boy, like, you know, the the floating... Like a buoyancy. Yeah, and it's apparently the world's number one hygiene soap brand. I don't know what other kinds of soap there are than hygiene soap. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've, I've never heard of Life Boy, so I don't know. That's a bold yeah. claim. But World's number one? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe in other countries, not this one. Yeah, um, it's like that um, that hair growth shampoo that's like the world's number one, but that's because it's so big in Germany or something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. So yeah, the advert has just got some arms on it with like sweatbands on and like a dumbbell. And it says, pump it, splosh it, bish, bash, bosh it. What? <laughs> None of those things Is mean anything. <laughs> None of those things are anything to do with soap, except maybe pump it, I guess, in one of those bottles. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought that was very weird and like a blatant rip-off of their whole brand. Um, yeah, that is bizarre. Yeah. I don't know why as well, but the other day one of my mates started talking about Bop It and she was saying um, she used to love it and I used to do this thing when you lost the game where it'd be like, do it the same, but better. But better. <laughs> and she was like she she used to love that and when she was uh, going to see her brother playing football or something and he like went to score a goal and missed and she like heckled him with that from the <laughs> and I was like that's Genius. so true. yeah but um yeah we were just saying we need that kind of motivation in our day-to-day -day lives like yeah it'd be good I think yeah well he wasn't always nice though the boppet guy sometimes he would just be a jerk about it yeah, and he had that voice of like a douchebag, didn't he? But I still love it. <laughs> yeah, I I have an update. Hangover wise. Hangover cure wise. Uh, oh what is it? So um on the last episode, on, on the episode with Lisa, I mentioned that I have a doctor friend and I've never thought to ask him if there's an actual <gasps> medical cure. Now I spoke yes. to him. And obviously I can't say his name because he's like a professional. Okay. And firstly, he asked if he gets royalties now that he's part of the podcast crew. But <laughs> I, I pointed out because he's an anonymous source, I, I actually legally can't pay him. That's contractual uh, obligation. But he said, I'm, I'm going to quote him directly. He what? said, well, everyone knows there's one secret to weight loss that doctors don't want you to find out about. <laughs> Same with getting a big dick too. But unfortunately, there isn't one for hangovers. Big bottle of Vimto, have a joint and eat some nasty food. Ah, oh, that's so disappointing. So, yeah, so that's it. The quest is over. Podcast done. I've never seen you again. The, the doctor's spoken. Yeah, but there you go. I mean, 
I don't I don't want to do that though. I don't want Vimto and I don't want a joint. No. And it depends what he means I feel by like nasty. That would make food. me feel nausea. Yeah. But know. I've not tried it. You know, maybe maybe that is the miracle cure. Maybe he's he's done all of the research scientifically. Yeah. You know. Yeah, maybe that's the that is the secret that doctors you know, don't want you to know about. He is the same guy. I don't know when and what episode, but I'm not going to tell the story again. But he's the same guy with the cadaver and the brain on the lip. Right. Oh fuck! Oh. <laughs> yes. Moving on. About that. Um, speaking of hangovers, I am drinking another weird flavored gin. I've got uh, Mediterranean Gordon's gin. Mediterranean orange, sorry, Gordon's gin. Mediterranean orange is that different than our orange? I don't know. It just says Mediterranean orange. Made with natural flavourings oh, no and inspired by a 1929 Gordon's recipe. That might just say that on all Gordon's gin, though, I don't know. A refreshing tasting, zesty orange gin. Expertly made by pairing the classic taste of Gordon's with delicious Mediterranean oranges. Well, It says that you're supposed to serve it by garnishing with a slice of orange. Surely I wouldn't need to if it's fucking mm. orange flavour. That's like garnishing your beer with hops. I don't know what hops are, so I don't know. I, <laughs> for, for someone who drinks a lot, I have no idea what's happening. I don't know. We thought yeah, some kind of something from a field. That's, I know that much. <laughs> um, while I was while I was looking for gin in Tesco, I saw this fucking stupid bottle opener, and uh, we talked about it. That, that they also have them in your Tesco, apparently. And I'm just sorry, I'm just pulling up a photo so that I can remember exactly how angry it made me. Um, <laughs> it's called Watcher. And it's it's a circle bottle opener. And then, and then it has feet and big eyeballs on it, right? And it says, <laughs> it says, keeping an eye on unopened bottles. And on the picture, the, the, it's like on the top of the, of the bottle that it's open. It looks horrified. Yes. Yeah. Big wide open mouth. <laughs> The way it's look, the way the way the the bottle opener is, it looks like it's looking at the bottle as you open it, but only as you open it, unless you store this bottle opener on top of the bottle at all times. And in that yeah, case, wh- why is it why is it watching the unopened like in case they open without yeah. permission? I don't understand uh, the concept. But, but bottle if, watcher. If that's if that is what you did, you put it on the unopened bottle so it could keep an eye on it. Then you would need to buy one for every bottle of beer that you have that you're not opening yet. The premise is flawed. I'm not sure that's true because every time you open one, you can just put it on the next unopened bottle. Either and then way, what about all the other unopened bottles, what are they getting up to? Well, this uh, thing's fucking guarding one. God knows. Yeah, exactly. If if Toy Story is to be believed, right, then you leave a room and fuck knows what goes on. I don't know what you're doing with beer bottles, but I wouldn't call them toys. Well, I always have fun. I'm just kidding, me too. So another thing that's happened to me this week, if I'm going to keep filling in unless you say okay. things. <laughs> um, Aisha made us watch another fucking awful two-hour-long thriller. Ah, uh, what was it? It's called. It's it's new on Netflix. I think it's a brand new movie too, but it's new on Netflix this week, and it's called "I'm Thinking of Ending Things." Ah, uh, that sounds like a rom-com. It's not. It's not. It's this fucking trippy psychological thriller oh no and it's got a guy who i don't know the actor's name but he was in the last season of breaking bad and at the time everyone called him fat damon because he looks like if matt damon was overweight oh no i can't remember what that guy who it is Uh, one second Um, (laughs) jesse plemons p-l-e-m-o-n-s jesse plemons oh that guy that guy Everybody look oh, him I up. Like, I like that guy. Right. Yeah, he, yeah he's, he's great. The film Whoa. was not great. Sorry, he's going out with Kirsten Dunst. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not even, I'm, I'm even going to talk about the film because I couldn't tell you. I don't know what it was about. I'm not sure what happened. We went to bed, right? Like, I was, I was falling asleep by the end because we, we didn't start it quite as late as last time, but we did start it like 10 o'clock and it was two hours long but then, whoa are you crazy <laughs> no but then i i paused it while i went and fucking i don't know anyway we didn't we we didn't end up watching it all like immediately in two hours but 
by the time it was almost finished, it was close to one o'clock and I was falling asleep and Aisha kept going, should we just go to bed and finish it tomorrow? And I was like, no, there's like 10 minutes left. And this is, I, I need to know now. I need to know if there's ever going to be a purpose to this fucking film. <laughs> there wasn't. There absolutely wasn't. The credits rolled and we were both like, what the fuck? But then Aisha did this thing that she does every single time where she looked it up and she read about it on fucking Reddit or something. And she's like, oh, so this meant that and this represents this. And this was, God, that's such a good film. And I was like, no, it wasn't. (laughs) No, no. now that you understand it, you might think that it's good. But a good film, you should understand after you've seen it, not after you've read someone else's interpretation of it. Yeah, that's good. I was fuming. I was in bed, right, and she's she's reading these things out to me, and she's like, "Yeah, right." And then, oh, so when he said this, and when this happened, and like, and that meant, it. oh, and I was like, "No, stop reading these things. You're convincing yourself this is a good film, and it fucking wasn't. It was two hours of wasted time. Terrible, garbage movie. But anyway, watch that, guys. Enjoy it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm a bit slow today because every time I breathe. <laughs> It's laborious. Is that the word? Sorry, guys. I'm full of steak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I was going to bring up... Um, remember when we talked about ages ago that Twitter account that I like to follow and it was this old guy's farm and he would do that... Yes. Oh, what was it called on a Sunday morning or a Monday morning? Okay, so I talked about this Twitter account I found a while ago called, like, Cairn Hill Farm or... Yeah. whatever it was called and um was this farmer guy and he, he does this thing every day or every week i think it's every day where he, he it's called rush hour and um yeah it's where I, he assume, opens... I assume he lets the animals out every day no i mean <laughs> sure. he, he uploads the video every day and um yeah it's where he just opens the barn door and then is like amazed and t- t- says hi to all the animals as they run out it's very cute and um I recently found another old man on Twitter that I like to follow who's, I guess he's also a farmer. <laughs> what? Any, if anyone didn't know what Twitter was, that is the most bizarre sentence in the world. I recently found another yeah. old man I like to follow. <laughs> anyway, his name's Gerald Stratford, and um, he's a retired fisherman and gardener. And according to his bio, heavy into growing big veg. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> he just um, he's just this old guy who wears like dungarees and stuff who just l- uploads photos of himself holding like giant celery and shit. Oh, I but love it. Yeah, it's so wholesome and lovely. I just love it and um I was enjoying following him, but then I was like, Oh, I really hope he's not a Tory. He just seems oh. like, you know what I mean? He seems so I'm not even Yeah, anyone I'm, who grows their own veg. <laughs> and is old. Yeah, do you remember? That, do you remember that study that came out? Um, I can't remember when it was. I think it was around the Brexit times. Um, that study that came out that said it's supposedly it's like age forty-seven that you start to become conservative. No, what? Yeah, like like uh, around statistically around age forty-seven, you become more conservative, and then it kind of keeps going up throughout your life that you get more and more conservative. Hopefully, <laughs> that's not the case for me and you. But who, who knows? Eh? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love, to, I'd love to say never going to happen to me. But it's kind of like how I said that about technology. Like, yeah. I, it, it's going to be easy. I will simply just not get out of touch. <laughs> my new thing. This seems like something you would enjoy, actually. Like we did with extremely. My new thing is just saying simply all the time. <laughs> and when, oh yeah, when, I like that. Whenever Aisha like says, "No, don't do that," I'll be like, "But." I simply will just do it (laughs) and there'll be nothing you can do about it. And she's like, you can't just say simply and that means that your argument is right. And I'm like, I I simply (laughs) can't. That's funny. It's good, isn't it? It's my new one. I like it. Yeah. I will keep meaning to them talk about what Loki songs were singing lately, but every time we record, I forget. And every time I think of one, I forget to write it down. Um, the only one I jokingly thought of was something that you probably wish I'd not said. But you know that song WAP? Yeah. Just change it to like WAL. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's, oh. 
I'm just kidding. I've never actually even listened to that song, so oh, you know, I couldn't do that. Man, but um, I looked that up because I saw some video director who was like, "I've worked with Snoop Dogg and blah blah blah, and I've filmed all these." intense rap videos and this is the most <laughs> disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life and blah oh, blah come blah on. all this shit so what, I, I look the video up and I'm like this must be some pretty wild shit then I think I'm going to enjoy this yeah. <laughs> and I watched it and I kept like waiting for the bit where it was going to get like insane and it just never happened I was just like so what bit am I supposed to be shocked by what bit am I supposed to be mad about like what's what's gone wrong I think, here I think people are mad about the fact that <laughs> women are singing about sex and enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, no, I know, I know. That's movie. clearly what people are mad about. It's nothing to do yeah. with, like, it's not fucking, well, would somebody please think of the children? It's just, this makes me feel uncomfortable because I like to have power over women. That's... Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I like your Boy. sexuality to be a, a, a possession of mine, <laughs> not, not a thing that you enjoy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to cut that out and post it online. As a direct quote from you. Oh yeah, great, great. That yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if actually everyone could take their own copy of that, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to feel the effects of this. Uh, Lisa Avail. I'm on my third or fourth gin, and more than anything, I'm getting um, dehydrated and warm. You know, you yeah, know when I'll hit that. you know when you you want to drink, but it just won't accept you. Like the moment yeah. will take you. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so go on. <laughs> so go on. Um, <clears throat> well, we, I mean, we're 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 close to running out of time, but you wanted me to talk about uh, my door-to-door sales job, but also I want to know what your note, what your notes mean. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I don't know if I want to dive into these. Oh, actually, I'll go into one of them next time because I, uh, maybe we can talk more about things like that. But um, the one I added, like, minutes before we started this episode was failed COVID crafts. And you know how we mentioned, like, everyone getting into, like, fucking cross-stitching them shit during lockdown? Yes. And I've always liked stuff like that, but I've, I think I have done a little bit more lately. So I uh, spent, I think, over an hour before um, following this what proclaimed itself as a 15 minute tutorial um trying to sew this zipped <laughs> pouch you know like like a makeup Sorry. bag or some shit zipped pouch zipped pouch you know is that is that is You're that like, an item is that a thing yes i am sure that was, that was what the, i think that's what i t- typed into google to find the fucking description. <laughs> what what's it what well you know it could be like for makeup or so for one, I've, I'm showing it on screen now, just so you can see right, it. So, it, so it's a makeup thing, bag. It's clearly like a square shape when it's supposed to be a rectangle. So there's the first time I fucked up. And then also, um, the insides, the seams are like frayed and showing. So anyway, I spent I spent over an hour on this thing that was supposed to be done in 15 minutes as part of a fun fun time, um, new skill to learn during COVID, but uh. I kind of fucked it up. I'm just going to give it away so someone has a gift. But um, I was just wondering if anyone else had tried the hand at any new crafts and failed miserably. I got back into. Do you remember? You may. No, well, I, no, you will because I, I did one for you. About a year ago, I got drunk and drew people's profile pictures on Twitter. Yeah, I remember that. And you looked like a goblin. Yeah, uh, so it was quite realistic. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually just another photo of you that I sent you back. <laughs> so I did that again because it came up on my time hop and I was like, oh shit, I never got back to some of these people. So I did that. Um, and that was my, that's my COVID crafts, as you've called Wait, it. So you did that recently, you mean? Yeah, I did it again. Like a year on from the day, I like carried on replying to people. And what was funny is there were strangers that were replying to me. Yeah. And I just replied, like, one year later, like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like just saying, here you go, with these horribly offensive drawings. The worst one was a girl I didn't know had, had replied. And I replied a year later, and I said, sorry about the delay and also the drawing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then she tagged the celebrity who was in the picture with her, who I also didn't recognize. And it was some celebrity that I'd drawn. Thankfully, oh, man. to my knowledge, she didn't reply. But hopefully she also didn't see it because sorry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're fine with just a random person on Twitter seeing it, but not a celebrity. Yeah, I mean, I need to keep my mad connects going, you know? What, what if in the future I need her for something? <laughs> um, just last thing before we go, um, one of Gerald Strafford's tweets that I enjoyed, you know, the old guy. Yes. <laughs> was, it's this picture of him holding giant celery. And the caption is, now what shall I do with this big boy celery? <laughs> <laughs> and it, he just tweeted again while we were recording this, like three days later, saying, this is what I do with big boy celery. Fill it with Marmite peanut butter for a day. Mm. <laughs> for a day? For a day, man. A whole day? I mean, I don't like Marmite, but peanut butter and celery, if you've not had that, is my favourite snack. I hate celery and peanut butter, so I don't think I'd be into that. Well, don't you try that then, because um, you won't. it won't live up to... to the way I've just described it, but everyone else, give that a go. <laughs> okay. Well, this has been an hour. Thanks for listening, guys. This has been episode 52 of a Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. I have been Daniel, and this has been Sophie. Say goodbye, Sophie. Bye, Sophie. Please find us on all social media at ahyddpod. Uh, send us an email, ahyddpod at gmail.com. Uh, fans on Patreon, patreon.com slash ahyddpod for a dollar a month. You can see all the video versions of these episodes. Or if you pay a dollar one time, you can watch all the ones that exist so far and then you can fuck us off again. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I recommend keeping in touch. And lastly, please check out our website, fuckyoujaredspear.com. It actually... Our website has been more of a hindrance than anything because it means we can no longer monetize our post on. We can't. We, sorry, means we can no longer advertise using our post on Facebook because, as Facebook told me, the word "fuck" is considered offensive. <laughs> so uh, they won't let me. They won't let me advertise anymore. Uh, oh no, that's terrible. Well, I just have to take the website out of the post, but I'm uh. not going to. Fuck you, Jarrettspear dot com. <laughs> okay, bye. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. Thank you for listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast.